Ten four, good buddy. Give me one of them good old boy jackknife semi horn honks. Give me one of them though, they're these. Give me some of that there diesel. That's right, diesel, baby. Today we're talking about the differences between gasoline and diesel. So strap in, because I'm about to talk like a gosh darn truck driver. By that, I mean normally. You guys need to let go of your inaccurate truck driver stereotype. You girls about ready to get serious? The biggest difference between gas and diesel is that gas, or petrol if you're nasty, is highly volatile and evaporates easily, making it very flammable, while diesel is a company that makes jeans to make your butt look good. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to check out my upcoming Comedy Central special. That joke's my opener and my closer, and all the ones in between. Around 1876, Nicholas August Otto invented the gasoline engine. Technically, most gasoline engines are auto cycle engines. Back in Otto's days, these engines weren't very efficient. In fact, only about 10% of the gasoline used actually moved the vehicle. The rest produced useless heat or went out unburnt. So in 1878, Big Daddy Cool Rudolph Diesel not to be confused with Big Daddy Cool Diesel Kevin Nash. You guys are my friends! Decided he was fed up with inefficient fuel. Who isn't? Am I right? Well, in 1892, he patented what is now known as the Rudolph engine. Oh, no, that's the wrong timeline. I meant the diesel engine. Both gas and diesel engines are four-stroke internal combustion engines. Strokes are intake, compression, ignition, and exhaust. But we know that. These engines got more strokes than Michael Phelps. Right? The swimmer guy? He swings with strokes? <laughs> That's in my next Netflix special. I'm gonna feel bad if Michael Phelps has a stroke now. Ooh, unless that means I have special powers. Those four stroke engines convert the chemical energy in the fuel to mechanical energy that moves the pistons. Pistons connected to a crankshaft and the up and down motion of the pistons, linear motion, creates the rotary motion needed to turn the wheels of a car, but we already know that. The big difference is that right here in the auto cycle engine, a gasoline engine has a spark plug that ignites the gas air mixture, causing combustion. The diesel engine don't need no stinking spark plugs. The hot air diesel mixture combusts when highly compressed. The engine intakes air, compresses it, and then injects the fuel directly into the combustion chamber. This is called direct injection. It is the heat of the compressed air that lights the fuel in a diesel engine. Most gasoline engines used port injection or a carburetor. A port injection system injects the fuel just prior to the intake stroke, outside of the cylinder so it can mix with the air. But with a diesel engine's direct fuel injection, the diesel fuel is sprayed directly into the cylinder in a fine mist. So why are they more efficient? It's a confluence of a few things, really. Big Daddy Cool Rudolph Diesel knew that higher compression would lead to higher efficiency and more power, and he was right. A gasoline engine compresses at a ratio of eight to one to 12 to one, while a diesel engine compresses at ratios from 14 to one to as high as 25 to one. Diesel fuel has a high energy content as well. On average, a gallon of diesel contains about 147,000 BTUs, while a gallon of gasoline, well, it's got about 125,000. That's one of the reasons diesel engines usually get better mileage than gasoline engines. They can make a lot more boom with those high compression ratios. Also, because of that forceful boom and long drive stroke, they can be more powerful, so they're the preferred engines for hauling stuff. And instead of the fuel producing heat by igniting via spark, the compression produces that heat, and that ignites the fuel. Gasoline's so volatile that it'd ignite before the compression stroke had completed. We do have gas cars nowadays with super high compression ratios. That's only recent. Because of the compression of 25 to one expands so much, a lot of that heat energy gets to dissipate. And diesel engines are generally cooler than gasoline engines. The reason that diesel can handle those pressures has a lot to do with its composition. Compared to gasoline, diesel fuel molecules contain more carbon atoms and in longer chains. These longer chains of hydrocarbons means that they store a little more boom, but it also means that they're heavier. 
so diesel gives off fewer fumes, making it less volatile. We love showing off how flammable gasoline is, so much so that I'm about to do it again. Ha! This never gets old. I'm gonna make this fire. This is pretty cool. It's out. Because of the type of hydrocarbon it contains, diesel emits relatively small amounts of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, and much less of it goes unburnt. And that could mean fewer emissions that lead to global warming. But it does release high amounts of nitrogen compounds and soot. We're talking in some cases two times the amount of nitrogen dioxide and 10 to 20 times the amount of soot, which leads to smog, some health conditions, and acid rain. Acid Rain is a cool sequel to a Prince song that you never heard of, but I've heard of it because I bought it from his estate. But it's not cool when it's fallen from the sky. Let's do a quick bing bang boom to further show some differences. Wait a minute, in case I burn myself, before I do this, make sure you hit subscribe. Here's gas. Super quick, super volatile, up and out. Here's diesel. A little bit of slower boom, and look at this. That's soot. This is gasoline. This is diesel. But you can see inside of here, let's turn this off. You know what? Let's get rid of this. Yep. Just as I thought. Soot. One of the benefits is that you don't lose heat energy. It's more efficient but the exhaust is cooler. Who cares? Well, cooler exhaust means the catalytic converter won't work on it, so it's harder to get rid of those nitrogen compounds. Scrubbing the exhaust of a diesel engine is a little more complicated. There's often filters that need to be cleaned. Now that we talked a little bit about the basics of a diesel engine, let's get into a couple kooky crazy behaviors you might have seen from diesel engines. First, you can get its tongue pierced. I'm just kidding, that's a little modification here. You guys are all grown up now, so it's time we had a talk about rolling coal. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Coal! You may see some of the other kids out there with diesel engines doing it, but that doesn't mean you should do it. I mean, they all jumped off a cliff, would you do it? No, because you're too scared. You'll never jump off that cliff because you're not as cool as them. Rolling coal is basically when you make your diesel vehicle fart a giant black soot cloud out of its car butt. You just get under the hood there and increase the amount of fuel entering the engine so that it emits large amounts of black sooty exhaust fumes into the air. Way back in the day, it was popular at tractor pools. Trucks and tractors would go against each other to see who could haul the biggest load. They'd roll coal like a special effect to show how much power they're putting into it. Then rolling coal kind of morphed into like a protest thing or a counter protest thing a bit. Diesel drivers would roll coal and shoot a big black soot cloud at protesters or maybe at hybrid vehicles or maybe just at foreign cars and show them their American freedom. But most protesters, hybrid vehicle owners and foreign car owners haven't heard of rolling coal. And they just think your truck's broken. Ha! Got him! Look, I know it's irresponsible and you probably shouldn't be doing it, but me. That looks pretty kick butt. <laughs> I mean, it's cool if that's how you want to express yourself. Just keep in mind that the American Cancer Society's linked exposure to diesel exhaust to lung cancer. It impairs visibility, making a massive safety hazard, and it violates the Clean Air Act, so you could be fined for making those kinds of modifications. But at the other end of the diesel spectrum is that free love hippie fuel known as biodiesel. Bio is short for biodome, and diesel is short for Big Daddy Cool Rudolph Diesel. You put them together and you get biodiesel, meaning a vegetable oil or animal fat-based diesel fuel consisting of long-chain alkyl esters starring Pauly Shore and the adopted Baldwin brother. 
Biofuels can be made from just about any biological ingredient, from corn to soybeans to animal fat, even delicious human fat. But no one would want a car powered by sweet, succulent human fat. That would be ridiculous. And it's time for us to get more than a nibble on the carcass, boys. I don't want to use that. I don't, I don't want to be the one eating people, you know what I mean? Biodiesel can generally be used in standard diesel engines with little or no modification. Not even a tongue piercing. Biodiesel is usually blended, but it can be used in its pure form. That's pure bio, baby. The standard blend is 20% bio and 80% diesel. Animal fats, plant oils, and even used cooking grease have stuff in them called triglycerols. That's actually a fancy word for fat. Through a process called transcentrification, the triglycerols are transformed to make esters and glycerol. The esters that remain are what we then call biodiesel. And biodiesel isn't that new. When Big Daddy Cool Rudolph Diesel first demoed his diesel engine, he ran it on peanut oil. That's nuts. <laughs> I've seen people using vegetable oil in their diesel engines. How do they do that? It's actually pretty easy. Vegetable oil is also long, heavy hydrocarbon chain. Vegetable oil is thicker than diesel so it doesn't form a spray as easily. You could dilute it with some diesel fuel, but then what's the point? So you change out the injectors, it can vaporize, and you're good to go. If you want to use old oil from behind an Applebee's grease trap, well, then you need to make sure you got a lot of filters to get rid of all that crud before it gets to your engine, but it'll work. Diesels come a long way, and with exhaust filtering systems and more efficient engines, it's a viable alternative to gasoline-powered cars. People are even coming around to them in the US. I mean, heck, it's basically rocket fuel, and that's pretty cool. Diesel! Make sure you subscribe to Donut, guys. Hopefully you noticed I got a new shirt. Sign up on our email list at shop.donut.media, and you'll get alerted for new stuff every week. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Donut Media. Follow me, at Bids Bardo. Why don't you check out this cool up to speed? Check out the first episode we ever did on gasoline. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't tell my wife that I put diesel in her plant spritzer.